Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope you've been having a great week. Um, I know that we've been killing those legs this week, so hopefully you take some rest days um, here and there and shake those legs out when you can, getting on some walks during the day, things like that. Sunday, make sure you take a rest day. Um, you can jump in on Team Wad tomorrow. It is a super fun workout. Nice little, I mean, everything's a little burning for you guys, right? So nice workout for you guys. Team Wad at 9 a.m. Um, we've got classes 5 a.m., noon, and 5 p.m. every single day. Um, and then today we also have some coffee with coach time. So you can hop in between 9 and noon. You have to reserve on Acuity. So click on that link and reserve so that I know you're coming. Um, and then we'll just do a Zoom call here to check in and see how things are going. It's a really good time to be reaching out um, and looking for that support that you need to get through this. So we want to know what's going well. We want to know where you're struggling and we want to be able to um, get some answers to you on and give you some ideas on how to keep moving um, in all aspects of life. So it doesn't have to be related to anything fitness or nutrition related. Um, you know, if you're struggling with the kids, something like that, we want to know. We want to be able to help out in any way. Speaking of kids, make sure you check out the calendar. Um, on Sunday this week, we're gonna have a Zoom call at nine. Again, an information-based one for you guys called um, Leaning versus Lunging. And so I'm just gonna discuss with you guys how to focus on some habits during this time to stay healthy. So all these fun things are gonna be coming up. Next week, we have some things for kids. We have some things to talk about recovery. So make sure you're checking out that weekly calendar um, and using those links to get signed up and join in. There's not a ton of signing up. A lot of it's just jumping in if it's a Zoom call, but if it is a coffee with coach, then you do need to sign up in advance. Um, we'll be doing those next week as well. So lots going on. Just wanted to put it all out there. Um, keep checking your email. For today, we're gonna start with that question of the day, which is what is your favorite? benchmark workout. So those can be girls workouts, uh, like the girl wads, you know, like named like Isabel, Grace, um, Nancy, all those fun ones. It could be a hero workout, um, like Murph. There are tons more than Murph. Uh, she had so many different things. I'm going to say my favorite um, benchmark, that's a girl's wad. I think I probably have a favorite hero wad too, but I'm just gonna go with the girls wad. I love Nancy. It's the overhead squats and running. I think it's five rounds of like 15 with a 400 meter run or maybe a 200. I can't really remember. Super fun workout though. I love overhead squats. Um, so share with us what yours is. For today, we've got a nice warm up. Um, we're gonna hit a Tabata, technically two Tabatas. Um, so Tabata times two. You're gonna do burpees, rest, in and out jacks, rest, push up, rest hollow rock rest, repeat that. And you're gonna go two reverse lunges, or sorry, um, reverse lunges, rest, um, quad stretch, rest, shoulder tap, rest, Russian baby makers, rest, two times three. Um, so we'll get after that together, show you what that is to get warmed up. And we're gonna hit a pre-wad of holding in the top of our plank, and then at the bottom of our plank, I'll show what that looks like. I want those to be active holds for 20 seconds each. You can rest between, um, if you need to, but ideally you're going from the top into the bottom, holding for 20 seconds, and then you're getting 20 seconds of rest before you get after the second minute of the imam, which is going to be a 30 second handstand hold. So that handstand hold can be against the wall in a wall walk position if you're afraid of kicking up into your wall, um, or it can be a um, handstand hold kicking up to your wall, and then if none of that's an option, you can go to like a chair, a couch, um, or in a pike position. So I'll show all of those variations. We're gonna get after five rounds of that. So minute one is the push-up holds, minute two is the handstand holds, and so on and so forth for five rounds. And then we're hitting a fun, fun workout today called 5-0 Gun Show. So for the 5-0 Gun Show, we've got three five-minute AMRAPs. You always have two minutes of rest between to kind of refresh that body a little bit. Um, the workout changes a little bit as you go. So the first five minute MRAP, we're doing 10 
floor press. I'll show all the variations of what that floor press might look like, um, depending on if you have two dumbbells, one, one heavy object, um, anything like that. If you have a barbell, it's a little harder to use if you have weights on it, but if you have, just have an empty barbell, it's work, it works fine. Um, into 10 push-ups. Again, I'll show those scales. Um, and then 10 tuck jumps, and then the scale for tuck jumps would be 20 high knees. Um, and if you can't jump at all in your apartment, like high knees are too much, you can do toe taps to an object. Then you're going to go through that as much as you can, rest two minutes. Those um, become 10 seated dumbbell press. Again, I'll show the scaling options. Um, 10 hand release push-ups. The scale for that would be the same as the regular push-up, only adding in that you're letting go at the bottom. And if you absolutely can't do that, then you're just gonna stick with what you did in the first round. Um, and then 10 tuck, tuck jumps again, or those 20 um, high knees or toe taps. Resting another two minutes and getting after one last one where those movements change a little bit again. We've got 10 standing push press into 10 handstand push-ups into 10 tuck jumps, or again, those 20 high knees, 20 toe taps. I will show the scale for um, the handstand push-ups. There are many different scales. One of the biggest things is if your push-ups stay the same the whole time, that's totally fine. Um, the idea is to make them a little bit more challenging as you go through, but if that first round, just like regular snake push-ups or knee push-ups is your, your scale and that's the like most intense, that's totally fine. We're gonna keep that. All right. So spent a lot of time talking. You guys can always fast forward through that talking, but it is helpful. So showing the movements, we will start with that warm up. We know what a burpee is, but I'll still show. Uh, so you'll go <laughs> ignore the funky socks, uh, laundry day, right? So we've got those 10 burpees, uh, or sorry, 20 seconds of burpees. Just laying down, peeling back up. Resting for 10 seconds, you're letting go into um, in and out jacks. So jumping and out, jacking those legs all the way together at the top, making sure that they come back together. In that dropping, you're dropping your hips back, kind of like a squat. Um, after those, we've got 20 seconds of push-ups, getting us ready for our workout here. If you need to, knee push-ups. Maintain that nice uh, 180 degree line, or line, 180, yeah, 180 degree line. Um, then we'll go into hollow rocks. And then you'll rest for 10 seconds, go right back into your burpees, in and out jacks, push ups, and hollow rocks. Once you're through with that, the two times through, you go into some reverse lunges, just stepping that leg straight back. And you'll go into that quad stretch. So you'll rest your 10 seconds, quad stretch. Rest your 10 seconds. We'll go uh, shoulder taps. So in the top of our Plank position, rest 10 seconds, and then Russian baby makers. So you grab your toes, pull your hips down, grabbing those knees outside your toes, keeping your hands under your feet the whole time. Rest 10 seconds, and you go right back into those reverse lunges, getting after all those movements for a second round. That should get us really good and warm for our workout. So that pre-wad is what we'll start with, just showing those movements and some scaling. So one big thing, top of the plank, right? We wanna be hands directly underneath those shoulders, nice wide hands. Make sure you're showing all those fingers spread apart. Keep the legs together, squeeze the butt, squeeze the hips, drive that upper back through the ceiling to get a nice active hollow position. You'll hang out for 20 seconds. Then you can lower yourself into the bottom of your push-up. We're not relaxing on the ground here, just hovering over 
in the bottom of the push rod for 20 seconds. If you need to, you can put your knees down ever so gently and then keep holding that position. That's a good scale. Or if you can't hold for 20 seconds and you need to break it up a little bit, you can rest for a couple seconds and then finish out holding. That's in that first minute. You should have 20 seconds of rest before you get into your 30 seconds inverted. I will start with the scaled option, meaning you have nothing to put your feet on. That scaled option is gonna be holding in a pipe. This is gonna be dependent on your hamstring flexibility. So you might not be quite as tight as I am. So you wanna think about walking those feet close to those hands, pushing the floor away, really activating those shoulders. Notice that I'm in my push press position. I'm really pressing, pressing that floor away. I don't want you guys to be hanging out here. Press that head through the window, even if you have to be really wide, still pressing through, try and find that shift in the hands as much as we can. We'll hang out for 30 seconds there, or if you have something to put your feet up on, you'll put your feet or knees up on that object. And again, the focus is on your head being in that window, pressing through towards your knees. Pressing the floor away. Then if you have a wall, you can use your wall as well. Um, so if you're going to kick up to the wall, you can do so um, ever so gently. You can kick up onto your wall. Sorry about this. Press that floor away. Hands under those shoulders again here in that push press position. Or you can wall walk up, getting to where you can. Even if you can't go super high on a wall walk, just make sure that head goes through the window. If you can walk yourself higher, do so and stay stacked. Those shoulders. So not craning your neck out like I was. Well, I'm seeing where my video is. So. 30 seconds there. Those 30 seconds um, can be broken up if they need to be broken up. You don't have to go straight through, but ideally you're doing 30 seconds and you're going right back into that hold. So this is five rounds for your pre wad All right, the 5-0 gun show. Starting with those floor press, we'll go through those here. So, Depending on what you have for weight, you can have both dumbbells. Say you have two dumbbells, you'll go both. If you have one heavy dumbbell, you can hold it in the middle if you need to. And then if you have one dumbbell that you can do with a single arm, we'll do five right, five left. So I'll show with this single, I don't have two, so I can't show what that looks like in reality, but I can show you um, with you know air ones. So feet nice and close to the heels, active core. Um, we're going to have those elbows at about 45 degrees. You never want anything like straight out, slightly down here so that we can engage that pec and lat at the same time. So you're going to take your, if you have two dumbbells, you're going to take them here, brace that core into the ground, press up overhead, and lower. Again, noticing that those, hip, those elbows are going towards my hips, not out towards the walls. So slightly down there. They're not coming down into my body like this, but just ever so slightly going out. So you go 10 if you have two dumbbells. If you have one dumbbell that is doable for five on the right arm as a single, you'll go five there. You can press that other arm into the ground to help stabilize. And then if that weight is too heavy for you to do single and it's the only weight you have, you can hold both hands. You're gonna have a little bit more of a narrow drive, but just try to push those elbows away. Press up overhead. Drive those elbows again at that 45 degree angle if you can. So depending on what you have, either doing 10 or both arms are going at the same time, you know, dumbbells or one heavy object, or you can go five right, five left. Right after that, we're going into those push-ups. We know our push-up position, right? We've got 10 push-ups, beautiful hollow body, dropping that chest to the ground, pressing the floor away. Scaling options, lower, knees down, lift, lift at that snake push-up, 
or what I call two-part push-up. And then your next option would be just keeping on the knees, going for those knee push-ups there. After your push-ups, you've got tuck jumps. Tuck jumps will be the same the entire time. You want to try to get your knees to your chest, both knees up to your chest, think about it like high knees. So maybe getting warmed up, that scaling option, of course, would be high knees itself. 20 of them, or if you can do your 10 tuck jumps, they look like this. So you can't get quite as much height on your tuck jump. You can do like these types of tuck jumps. They're just not quite as easy to rebound out of. Um, so whatever you need to do for your tuck jumps, 10 tuck jumps or 20 high knees. If you absolutely can't do any jumping, it'll be 20 toe taps. But hopefully you can at least get those knees up. So after your tuck jumps, you go right back into your floor press and then your push-ups. Tuck jumps, keep going through that as many times as you can in five minutes. You're resting, Whew, resting two minutes. After that rest, you're going into seated dumbbell press. Exact same thing as the floor press. If you have two dumbbells, use both and activate that core, you've got 10. If you have one heavy dumbbell and you can't do single arm with it, elbows up, you've got 10. If you have a weight that's um, light and you want to make it challenging for yourself, five single arm on the right, and then five single arm on the left. Obviously, this is a heavy weight for me. Um, I'd probably do both here for those 10. Um, so with your seated dumbbell press, biggest thing is that you keep that core active, keep the chest high. Right, we're not like reaching back and doing this. Chest nice and high, squeeze the core, press that head through the window at the top. Right, we're not pressing out. Directly up overhead, lock those arms out the best you can. After 10 of those, we've got 10 hand release push ups. So coming down, hands come off the ground, press. Keep that core engaged. We don't want to work on like a saggy skill. We want to make sure that our core is engaged. We're not putting stress on that low back. If we need to scale there, we can do again the same thing as our push up release, knees into the ground, press and lift. Or you can go knee push up, release and push. And then if all of those scales are still too challenging, we can always um, either go to an object, so like push up to a chair. Um, Without the hand release, you just push up, chest touches, press away, um, or like a couch or something like that. And then say that everything's still you like needs to do that you like the knee push up, but the hand release is too much. Just stick with your knee push up. So you can always keep the scale from the previous AMRAP if you need to. Then we've got those tuck jumps again, which I don't need to show. So see your dumbbell press, hand release push ups, and tuck jumps. Final. Then you rest two minutes. Final five minute AMRAP is going to be 10 push press. So we now get to use our legs finally to help with some of that drive. Now that our arms are fatigued, um, we want to add in some hip drive. So with that push press, really want to focus on that two inch dip squeeze. It's not a dip really low. It's not sitting down and then driving out. Hips go directly towards those heels, two inches, squeeze, to drive. So you can kind of get that warmed up, just that aggressive drive, see so the hips warm, get you moving a bit. You should notice my dumbbell actually moves because I'm creating momentum out of the bottom half. Then we're going to finish by pressing up overhead. You can either do five right, five left. If you've got a pair of dumbbells, you'll do 10 total. And then if that one dumbbell is too heavy, you'll go front rack position. This is always, always, always doable with a barbell as well if you only have access to that or that is what your access is. 10 push press with your barbell, great. 
Um, floor press is the only one that's a little bit challenging with the barbell, so you can use your dumbbells there. But if you want to use seated dumbbell press, you can do seated barbell press instead if you want, um, push press, whatever. Um, if you have a plate, still a great option. You just probably can't do a single arm with a plate, so you have to do both arms for 10. Then we have handstand push-ups. So if you have handstand push-ups, 10 reps is still quite a bit. We want this to be something that you're pretty proficient in. If you have handstand push-ups, you want to pull back the rep to like five because you're still working on those, you can. Um, and then that scaling option would be first scale is just regular push-ups or hand release push-ups depending on where you're at. And then as we go from there, we can do pike push-ups, but what we really want to see with that pike push-up is that the head can touch the ground. These I always make look easier than they are, but you can reach your head down and then press through the window. It doesn't have to be an aggressive pike. So I can pike about here. But if that's too challenging, you can be closer to your regular push up, but reach that head out to make a triangle and then press through. I've got to adjust the angle here so you guys can see what that looks like. It's kind of like a push up to down dog, but this time in your push up, you're reaching your head forward and then pressing through to that down dog. It does get at the triceps a little bit more, and we only want you to be able to, or to do this if you're able to complete that full range of motion. Same thing with bringing your feet up onto something and getting into that pike position, bringing the head into a triangle and then pressing through. We only want you doing this if you're able to actually come down to the ground and then push the floor away. We don't want to head just work on this. That's not developing anything. So only add those progressions as you're able to. Um, and then you finish with your 10 jump, tuck jumps and get right back through it. Whew. Let me know how it goes. As always, you can reach out to your coaches, ask them for specific scaling for you. Um, you can send videos to us and say, hey, this is what I did. Were these pike push-ups okay? Um, you know, was this okay? Obviously, it's not gonna change anything in the moment, but then going forward, you know what to do for yourself. So reach out to us.